Hello, and thank you very much for joining. My name is Philip Weitz, and I'm currently a PhD student at the Department of Medical Epidemiology and Biostatistics at Karolinska Institute, Stockholm. And today I'm going to present our work, Prediction of KS67 Scores from Asian East Stained Breast Cancer Sections Using Convolutional Neural Networks. So um, the context of our study is that um, we would like to predict um, K67 scores from H and E stain images instead of uh, the immunohistochemistry stain. And we're interested in that because K67 scoring can aid the stratification of ER positive breast cancer patients. So it's basically in some countries used uh, to decide how aggressive the treatment regimen should be uh, with regards to chemotherapy. Um, however, unfortunately, K67 immunohistochemistry uh, lacks analytical validity, which is basically um, scoring an already existing image. And also the standardization um, of the sample preparation um, varies. Uh, so there's basically a huge um, inter-observer, uh, intra-observer and intra-lab um, variability, unfortunately, in KS67 scores. Uh, however, prior studies have demonstrated that there's at least some information on the KS67 uh, expression in uh, the H and E morphology. Um, however, these prior studies largely relied on um, manual registration of consecutive slides uh, or tissue sections and uh, or restaining of uh, H and E and immunohistochemistry. Uh, however, that doesn't really scale to um, large routine clinical data sets. Um, so we also see this a little bit as a case study of what actually to do with the a uh, large scale um, data set of paired immunohistochemistry and H and E images. Um, so yeah, basically the objective as mentioned is to develop a computer vision model based on convolutional neural networks that can predict the tumor average KS67 positive percentage from H and E stained images. And um, the materials that we use for this study um, is first for a pilot, a set of 126 matched KS67 and H and E stained whole slide images. And then for this full study, we're going to scale this up to more than 1,500 matched images. The results that I'm going to present now only refer to this pilot, however. Um, we compared four models so far. So first we used the K67 two more average as a weak label for all image tiles um, for the corresponding H and E home slide image. And second, um, we used the registration algorithm from the UNHEAR challenge uh, to register immunohistochemistry to H and E, and then basically use this deformation field to register all detected positive and negative cells uh, to the H and E, and then computed a local label of the percentage of positive uh, K67 cells in the H and E, uh, and use this basically to really have a local label to train the uh, CNN and H and E image tiles. And uh, we also investigated two cycle bound based approaches where we did an unpaired domain transformation. And the first one, we basically transform H and E tiles to the K67 domain, train a CNN in the K67 domain to predict the K67 score, and then um, apply this model to the fake H and E to K67 images. And the fourth one, we transform K67 tiles to H and E domain and train the model on these generated H and E images, and then uh, predict on the real H and E tiles. And uh, here you see the performances of these approaches. Um, so basically the plot shows the Spearman correlations between um, K67 scores for the whole tumor um, from immunohistochemistry correlated with the um, tumor wide average um, of the predictions of the respective H and E whole slide images. Uh, and the confidence intervals were obtained through bootstrapping. Uh, and we see that basically the weak label approach, the registration-based approach, and um, training on uh, real K67 and predicting on generated uh, K67 images more or less have the same performance, only training on uh, fake tiles performs a little bit worse, which is actually in line with previous studies that used this sort of um, unsupervised domain transformation in the histopathology domain, typically training on generated images is a little bit worse than predicting on generated images. And what we conclude from these preliminary results on the 126 matched uh, images is that um, the registration performs narrowly best, but it's hard to tell with these confidence intervals really. Uh, we suspect that registration could actually be a lot better, but we found it to uh, perform a lot worse than in the unhear challenge, 
uh, probably because our slides are not consecutive and because there's actually a lot more artifacts like blue grass cracks, glass cracks and so forth. Um, so yeah, we are really curious to see what will happen when we scale this up to the 1,500 pairs of images. And we're also looking forward to having interesting discussions. Maybe any of you have uh, interesting ideas of um, what further approaches we could be looking into. Um, so yeah, uh, we're looking forward to discussing this with you. Thank you very much for your attention. And finally, I would like to um, thank my co-authors and the other uh, members of the Predictive Medicine Group.